without bending your knees. Yeah. Without bending your knees. You bent. <laughs> you can't bend your knees, but you have to jump without bending your knees. Okay, you go. <laughs> now, let's get a different angle. Turn from the side. And then jump. So we can make sure that your knees are not bent. <laughs> okay, Bishop. Okay, Antoine, Pastor Lawrence. <laughs> Elder Gosa. Okay, Pastor Simmons. <laughs> okay, I feel like the best, the best jump. I feel like Pastor Lawrence was the best jump. It was higher. It was higher. All right, Pastor Lawrence. There you go. Okay, so this challenge is for a $15 gift card to Starbucks and then this nice little koala bear with some chocolate. This is a little bit easier. It's not physical. It's more mental. So let's do one participant at a time. Any volunteers? Time, yeah. Come on. All right, this game, this challenge, rather, is called Think Fast. Think Fast. Can you turn the music down just a smidge, please? Think Fast. I'm going to say a word, and you have to say the first thing that comes to your mind. It has to make sense. In order to win, it has to make sense to the word. You have 30 seconds to answer. Are you ready? You got 30 seconds now. You ready? Origin. Bay. Withdrawal. Convince. You have to say, you have to respond. <laughs> you have to respond to the word. You got 30 seconds. They're just random words, but you have to say what the first thing comes to your mind, and they have to make sense in order to win. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I'm sorry if I didn't explain that right. You ready? One more time? Okay. You ready? Okay. Ready? Dose. Cooperation. Right. 
Miracle. Miracle. Mainstream. Float. Flavor. Superior. Effective. Pool. Threat. Threat. Wash. Lace. Root. Thought. Punch. Relation. Spin. That's it? Okay. What you got? How many you got? About five? Six. Six? Okay. You ready? 30 seconds. 30 seconds. Distort. Slice. Pure. Grow. Daughter. Wife. Repeat. Book. Hiccup. Offensive. Costume. Deadly. Decoration. Seven. All right. Thirty. Ready. You ready? Ready. <laughs> Drawing. Reject. <laughs> Forbid. Permanent. Outlook. Bulletin. Funny, style, earwax, groin, hip, expose, marketing, mosaic. That's it. Nine. Anybody else want to beat Antoine? One more. We got time for one more. One more. Anybody else? Come on, Shekinah. <laughs> Reflect. Frog. Gear. Science. Recording. Palace. Artist. Vain. Belief. Finance. Back. X-ray, situation, situation. Invisible. invisible, strike, Stop. Stop. <laughs> anybody else want to be Antoine? He's leading right now. One more. <laughs> All right, come on. She's going to be the last one. You ready? 30. Silver. Fitness. Resign. Peak. Leave. Permanent. Copper. Minimum. Analysis. Umbrella. Desire, path, merit, review, pair, 
sector. Formal. Alcohol. Eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. She is the winner. Here you go. Here you go. You're not. You're not done. Yes. All right. Thank you all for participating. That was good for our icebreaker. Um, we like to thank everybody that came out to participate in the conversation. We thank everybody that's joining on Facebook Live. We are getting ready to open the panel discussion. Um, we ask that the panel not over talk each other. If you have a question, we place signs at your table that you can hold it up. That way um, we won't be interrupting each other. We ask that each response be at least two minutes long or less. Um, we want to keep it clean. We want to keep it holy. Um, but we want to be honest. We want to be truthful. And it's okay if you don't agree with something somebody else has said. Um, that's why we're having the conversation. Um, so, and we're praying that this conversation will lead to other conversations. Um, conversations that need to be had. And a lot of times we don't deal with because of being in the church or we are so religious. Um, we pretend like we don't go through things, but we go through things just like everybody else. If you cut us, we gonna bleed red blood just like everybody else. We have problems in our flesh just like everybody else. But what we do as being saved, sanctified, and filled with the Holy Ghost is that we try to keep our flesh under the blood. And we know that anything that we don't keep under the blood, that we don't keep feeding it the word, we're liable to fall to temptation. Um, the Bible tells us to flee fornication. So, and then also it's not just fornication. Sometimes we struggle in our mind. We struggle with um, being inadequate, um, looking for other people to validate us, to tell us who we are and who God has called us to be. That's why you have to have your own personal relationship with him. And then we struggle. We have people that struggle in their marriage. They're in bondage. They stay together for the look of it. That's deception. That's deceit. You know, so um, these are things that we want to talk about. We want to, there's a broad spectrum of things that we want to talk about. We might not get to it all tonight. So we're just going to do the best that we can and let the Lord have his way. Amen. So we're going to get started. Um, I'm going to turn this part over to Sister Chanel. It's going to be Chanel and I. We're going to go back and forth with ask, asking questions. Um, and then we might even take a look at some questions that people might have on the Facebook Live and ask those questions. Do you want me to start or you want to start? Okay, I have a question. Um, I have a question. Somebody asked, and this is for a married person. What makes you fight to stay together? And we can hear it from the woman's perspective and the male's perspective. What makes you fight to stay married? Any, any side can go first. You want to take that, Sister Megan? Um, I would say what makes me fight to stay married, um, because I know what the Lord told me. I know what he showed me um, before I said I do, before, you know, my, my relationship with my husband. Um, before then, we were friends first, and I just know what the Lord showed me. So I have to stay true to that. And what makes me fight is for my family, is for my bloodline, just to break generational curses, um, breaking generational curses in my life. That's what makes me fight hard, makes me want to stay. Yes. Brother Carter. Um, 
I fight for my marriage because it's a, it's a covenant before God, before people. So I take it seriously because it's not for a joke. It's not for a period of time or like a contract that after a while or depending on how it works out, then I'll quit. All right, make a change and come back. So that's why I fight for it because it's a covenant that I take before God and I'm committed to it. And with his help, with his help I believe that I can make it through. And thus far, it's been great. Amen. Anyone in the audience want to respond to that? That's been married and that's still married and fighting to stay married. What makes you fight? One, two, there we go. Um, just knowing that, um, and it sounds cliche-ish, but just to know that you're better together. Um, so um, there's so many, you know, before I got married, you know, I love living the single life, but it's nothing like having uh, someone beside you to help you in those areas that you're weak. So um, there are areas um, I'm not great at administration, um, and, but my wife is, you know, so where I'm weak in those areas, she is there strong. So being that better team together makes me fight. Amen. 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 Bishop? Bishop? What makes you fight to stay together? Now, and then and the reason why I ask is because his relationship is not like two years, three years. He has longevity in it. And for us that are looking to be married and for the, those that are married and they're young in it, you know, after the honeymoon is over, what makes you fight to stay together? I think what helps, uh, what causes us to, what causes me to fight to um, stay with my wife is um, she's been there in the high and the lows um, from the beginning. Before we got where we are today, and even <coughs> even today, uh, there are struggles and things that we go through, um, and she sticks right there. She's my helpmate, and I think because she's been so um, supportive, uh, and uh, you know, both in the financial as well as in the spiritual, we we just paired. And I think that God. Uh, has a way, you know, when the Bible talks about um, how God created someone for Eve or for Adam that would uh, be a helpmate to him, um, bone of his bone and flesh of his flesh. And uh, that person is comparable. They, you compare, you work side by side together to um, make things happen. And so I think that um, that helps me to fight continues to help me fight. And then we have family. And I like what Sister um, Megan said, that generational curse, because there's so many families that go through divorce, go through separation, go through issues such as that. And when you have that um, gener coming generationally over and over again, you fight to, you know, make the devil out of a liar. You know, you have to fight. And the, the gift of the Holy Ghost helps us to stay together. And so that's the other thing that helps us to stay together is knowing that we both have relationship with God and there's nothing we can't do together. Regardless of what we go through, we can do it together because of the gift of the Holy Ghost. First Lady, what makes you fight to stay? Um, I, don't, I don't want to sound silly, but it's not a fight for me. Um, it comes easy. So I don't struggle in the area where I'm having to fight to stay married. Mm -hmm. um, I took a vow, and I took it seriously. Mm -hmm. um, I made it, um, and I wouldn't have made it if I didn't love him the way that I do. Um, and because of the love that I have for him, it's not a fight for me to stay with him. Now, you want to talk about something else, you know, with disagreements or something like that, but it's not a fight for me to stay married to him. I mean, it's an honor. And Amen. so because I love him, I'm good. Amen. That's beautiful. That's beautiful. Amen. You know, and that's beautiful. I, I mean, I really don't have no words after that because, you know, it's, you know, it's the way that we 
we we wrote the question, but that was a good response. That was a true and honest response. That is not a fight when you love somebody, you know, to stay with them. It, it comes easy. So that's another way to look at it. Here's a question for singles, single men. Why is it so hard for single men in the church to commit? Came up with that question. Somebody asked me that and I wrote it down. Single man. You the only single man pastor. To the Can audience help as well. Why is it? Why? Well, I guess from a, you know, a woman asked this question. Why is it so hard for a single men? It appears that it seems that it's hard for single men in ministry to commit to someone. Well, I think that's, it's broad for everyone. It's a different reason. Um, I can only speak in regards to myself. Um, oh, Lord, I'm going to get in trouble with the women. But it's an open conversation. It's perspective. This your, your so, perspective. And specifically for me, I can't speak for everyone. Sometimes you want to make sure that you are in a place that you can commit. Mm -hmm. um, because, and we're not necessarily talking in, in regards to marriage, just commitment. You know, um, <clears throat> you just have to make sure that you're in a place where you're ready to, where you're ready to commit because it may appear because you are in ministry that you are mature in every area, mm -hmm. you know, but just because you're mature in ministry and you're a saved man doesn't mean you're mature in every area of life. And so for me, before I can give commitment, full commitment to someone, there are certain um, <clears throat> things that I want mastered in my life, you know, so that, that's the reason I think. And for other people, you know, um, some people like um, having the attention of multiple, yeah. we're just gonna keep it real. That's true. Of, of multiple, you don't want to, um, you don't want to feel tied down and committed to one. Mm -hmm. You just got to know what season you're in in your life. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's about wanting to make sure before I commit to someone that I'm I'm matured in, in every area so that I can be the best committed person to you that I can be. Shalom. I have a rebuttal to your. Uh, it matches, it was a question, and it matches what you were saying. Um, so you're saying men have to be prepared. The question is, why does it seem that the women has to be fully packaged or well prepared? Like she has to know how to cook. She has to know how to clean. She has to know how to manage finances. She has to know how to raise children. She has to know how to take care of you. And the man can come and complete. Oh, wow. But I will say, but do women have that same standpoint? I've heard women say, oh, you want them tall, you want them dark, you want them muscular. So I, I, men and women have the same standard, but it's, it harkens on men more because the outlook of it is that men have a hard time cooking. But these are behaviors. We're not talking about appearance. Okay. We're talking about behaviors. Oh, the behavior. okay. So if a woman has to be a cleaner, a, mm. a chef, a caretaker, a... I'm not going to say that because yeah. we're in the church. But right. she, has to, she has to be well-rounded, you know, in mm. that area. So the, yeah. So the question is, why does it appear or seem... Like a woman has to be groomed to take care of a man, and a man can come insufficient. Well, if, if it is, it shouldn't be. I mean, it shouldn't be. It should. It should be. It should be the same across the board for both male and female. I mean, I don't know. Oh, I'm sorry. Question from the audience. A statement because I. Um, I agree with whoever asked the question mm -hmm. because it does seem like we have to have all this stuff together. And if I'm bringing all that to the table, what are you bringing? 
because I right. got the whole meal. Right. So you're going to contribute anything to the table. Right. I feel like we should be, we should, you know what I'm saying, we should com compliment each other. Mm -hmm. One right. of the things I don't like when somebody say, that's my better half. No, you're not my better half. We, we are better together, but you're not my better half. I was whole when you came. So we can both be whole when we come. Don't expect for me to bring the whole meal, the dessert, and everything else, and you don't bring, you don't even bring an appetizer. Right. So I think that's what the question was. It's like, why does it, when men look for a woman, they want all this, this, and this, mm. but then when they come, they come as, we got to work with you. We got to work with what you right. bring. Well, that's so intertwined. I think that's what they were saying. That's intertwined with the first question. Uh, that's for me specifically. I want to be able to bring the same thing to the table before I ask it of someone else. So, you know, sometimes it's not <clears throat> that you don't want to be committed. You just want to be adequately prepared. And you got to know what season you're in in your life. I just want to, I'd like to just interject. I feel, and I've been married twice. My first time I was married, I was married for 20 years. My husband died. I married again. In five years, he died. So I do have some background in marriage. But I believe it's the way it is with women having to be able to care for the family and do all this. It's because we, as women, accept that. We accept men that were raised not to be a man, to be somebody else, to have always have somebody to do their laundry and wash their dishes and cook their meals. And there's nothing wrong with taking care of your husband. Absolutely nothing wrong. It's a privilege to do that if he gives you that same respect and honor back. I'm no maid. Right. I mean, you know, it's a give and take in a marriage, and women accept because they want to be married. They want to be with someone, so they'll take whatever somebody gives. If he says he's not going to do it, and but you want me, you have to accept that, and they take it. And that's why women have to be so prepared to take care of a man because they know that they are in short supply, or good men anyway, or a man is in good supply. So a woman will take anything just to say, I got a man. Got another response in the back. Praise the Lord. Uh, I believe that God said that when He made Eve, He made for a helpmate. It don't mean that she do all the work. Cause the way I was brained, that my way I was raised, my mother took and made the, my brother. It was ten of us. My my mother made the brothers cook like we could. He made, she made the brother wash dishes and uh, wash clothes like we did. When we do, when they do our job, we do their job. We get out there and rake the yard, take the crash and stuff like that. So uh, when we look at each other as one, like you got, you got a husband, your husband supposed to take care of you, get in there and cook food for you. You got chairman. He both take care of the chairman like you take care of the chairman. It should not be no partial thing because God didn't make us partial. God made us one. Anybody else? Well, there was a question on Facebook Live. They asked, why does it take the men so long? Like, to commit. Why does it still take you so long? Even, you know, you said there's areas in your life that you need to grow and you need to come up in. Why does it take you so long to, like... Okay. Saints, please don't... Saints, please don't choke me out. But if it has taken a man uh, longer than you think, um, it's because I... And I'm just going to speak. Y'all don't knock me yes, out. But I will say this. Either he is not confident that you are the one mm -hmm. or he's looking for something else just to make sure I don't want to put all my eggs in this basket and then that later on I'm not satisfied with the choice that I made. And so therefore, if that is the case. <laughs> That's an honest answer. That's an that, honest answer. that is the case, Ia, uh, we're trying to answer your question. So maybe they, the man himself is not sure that this is what he wanted. Right. And then, intertwined with all of that, um, you, you, women have expectations as well. We do. So, if Man. you want me to be what you want me to be, I've got to be prepared to be what you want me, for me to be. Amen. And that may be true. And to a certain degree, I agree with what everyone has said. 
but there becomes a time where that becomes a cop out and you're just dragging me along and you're wasting my time. You're absolutely Depends and so on the I scenario. Will, that I, that that could be that could be the case. But if it's gonna take you five years to mature to marry me, come on. Bye bye, baby, bye bye. Yeah. I that's got true. to go. That's true. Because I've wasted five years of my life yeah. on something that's gonna take me nowhere. So at the end of the day, some of them and some of the men, that's a cop out. That's something for them to have to say to buy them time to continue to string you along. So it has nothing to do with them maturing. It has nothing to do with them getting prepared because you haven't bought a house. You haven't bought a car. You haven't made those steps towards marriage to prove to me that you're about to bring me into something. So that's a cop out and that's just you having somebody on your arm to say, ooh, I got a girlfriend or ooh, I got somebody with me. And you know you're not going to marry them. You know you're not because you yourself don't want to be married. Period. You're stringing well, okay, them along. You're this, them along at this, this point. This leads me to the next question. How, how do you know when enough is enough? How do you know when to cut the rope, cut the tie? First, first of all, Elder, go back, to, go back to what we're talking. Are we talking about marriage or are we talking about committing to relationship? It, it, it could be both. It could be both because you could be in it. Okay, when I when I'm when I say both, what because I mean by single. marriage is what if you're in a re, you're in a marriage that you're just in it for the look of it. You stay together for the look of it. You stay well, together, the, um, and then or you're worrying about what people are gonna say. Then on the other hand, when you're dealing with the singles. How long, like if you're, if you're in a relationship, if you're in a relationship, how long do you give someone time to get themselves together? And it, it's not just the men that got to get themselves together. It's women that got to get themselves together too. Yeah, but the question Amen. shifted because even the, the initial the first question, question was commitment. was about commitment. Yes. Why does it take the men so long to commit? Wait around all day question. for you to say you want to be with me, date me. That's a different question. Well, That's different. I, I don't have to put all my eggs in one basket to date you because dating is more than one person. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Right. So if you want to commit, that means you want to lock me down. Sister Dee Dee. Oh, I'm sorry. All right. Um, I can say I've seen it on both sides. Just in one relationship with my husband. We dated for a year and a half. But at that time, we were not ready for each other at all so we ended up breaking it off after a year and a half and we separated for a while then we got back together but when we was first dated it was because a lot of people was like okay y'all two need to be together da, 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 da. we were not ready so we had to separate get ourselves figure out who we were apart so when we did come back together we had to take our time and get our relationship together by ourselves ourselves first before we even let anybody know we were back together mm -hmm. but unfortunately it took us a little bit longer because we had to get some things sh figured out amongst each other but when we did I had to kind of push him a little bit because he took a little bit longer than I expected for him to like okay after four and a half years back together okay you're gonna have to make up your mind either we're gonna take it to self order or um, we gotta back out because I'm not going to waste any more time waiting. If you don't know I'm for you by now, you won't know. So after that, he had finally decided in his mind that he was ready finally to commit. But see, a lot of people don't know. You have to know your worth. You have to know how much you can stand and tolerate. If you're going to be in a relationship and you want to be committed to that person, but you can't have a relationship where you can talk to them and say, listen, um, um, too much together. Or, Talking to Mike. Okay. Um, either um, too much together, um, are we going to um, do this? You got to have be very open and be honest with your expectations. Yep. If you're not going to be honest about your expectations, where you want that relationship to go, y'all just going to be sitting there going around in circles, not telling the truth, how you're feeling, and then either you'll be stuck with a person you really don't want to be with or you're going to leave somebody that you should have stayed. I think right. the, I think the main thing that she said <clears throat> is you have to be truthful about your expectations. What are you expecting out of this 
relationship or this commitment or this courtship or what have you. Can I say something? Yes. Um, you know, marriage, as you said earlier, is a commitment. And personally, from my own personal experience, when I met my wife, we started talking over the phone for about, I think it was in October. First time I met her was on Thanksgiving Day. And by, before Christmas, we got married. That's not even quite two months. Here we are over 18 years. So if, you're, if your decision and your, if, if, you're both, if both of you are looking for the same thing and you both are willing to commit, I'm not talking about how I feel about you because you look right or because of what I think, I evaluate you and see what you have. Because I'm, when I met her, we already been talking on the phone for over two weeks. But I could, I could realize that the same, same things I'm looking for in life, she has the same commitment to that. See what I'm saying? So there was no drawback to commit. In, in my mind, I have nothing to lose. I believe I would, like I tell her, she still says, says sometimes, I believe I was made, made for love, and I was made for love. You see what I'm saying? So I believe, I believe in the marriage life. It's a good life. And even though I was coming out of one, you see what I'm saying? I was hurt and everything. But even so, I still didn't give up on life because I believe in the covenant of marriage. And I, I don't a man need a wife. You see what I'm saying? I'm, I'm not talking about a girlfriend. So, like I said, if you both have the same goals, all you have to do is be, become committed about it. I mean, hanging on these long relationships, to me, it's, it's a waste of time. Like in two-year engagements and we date two years and engage two years. I always tell my daughter, I'm a son, that's foolishness. You meet a woman, you love her. I'm not talking about you attracted to her. I'm not talking because love, love, love is not a feeling because that change. You see what I'm saying? It's an act of will. You got a desire to do this. And when we go biblical with that, God, think about it. Do you think God feel good about the way we treat him so much so that he would even send his son to die on the cross for us? I don't believe he feel pleased about the way we treat him. But yet, the act of his love for us, he still love us, is the act of his will to do it. You see what I'm saying? Think of, if you want to look at it the other way around, I mean, we, it's an act of our will to love those who persecute us. We, can, we have to choose to love. We don't feel to love. You don't love them because they're physical. That can change by an accident. Over a period of time, she have two kids. What? You don't love her shape no more? You see what I'm saying? So we gotta, we got to see where our perspective are. Are you committed to a relationship because you realize it takes a man and a woman? Or are you just going after what she looks like right now? So it's, it's a purpose. It's a choice. It's a commitment. It's, it's not a... <laughs> And like Mother Wright always told me, she said, no saved person has no business dating or being engaged for a long time. It's, it's, it's not going to work. And I feel like if the man is lackadaisical in his commitment to me, it's going to be lackadaisical in my marriage to you. It's going to take so long to do everything. I, I, we don't have that kind of time. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And I'm just saying, like, my husband, well, we were friends for a long time, but my husband knew what he wanted, and in eight months we was married. It wasn't no long engagement. It wasn't none of that. He decided that's what he wanted, and he moved in on Period. I like to also add to that, um, as um, um, Deacon Cardell um, just said, sometimes we use the getting ready part, but like he said, if we're both knowing what we want, we can work on our goals together. Mm -hmm and maybe accomplish them faster, already married and together. I am so glad that I got married the time that I did. Amen. Because if I had to pick or choose now for a husband, I would be in trouble. So I thank God that I got married 20 years ago. Because now, it's slim pickings, baby. And either don't want to work, or it, it just it's just so many, it's just, <laughs> just, it's just so many things that's just a hindrance to you saying, Yes, but I'm just, it's hard God bless, I pray for y'all singles, it's hard I pray out here. for you, it's really it. It, I pray for you, you know, and I lift you up, but when you find a good, when you find a good person, you find the right person, and you believe that that's the one for you, and you believe in your heart that you want to be married, go ahead and do it, y'all work on your goals together, accomplish your goals together, move forward together, all of that waiting, all that, all that stuff is going to do is just cloud your vision, that's what's going to happen. Okay. I, I got a question um, from a young woman for the men. Any man. It doesn't have to be just single to married. Her question was, 
should um, women approach men? And if women approach men, is that a sign of desperation? What do you mean in approach like? Just if hey, how she's are you? interested in you, I'm assuming, you know, is it, is it okay for her to pursue? I'm a little old school. I don't like that. I ain't with all that. Don't pursue me. Let me pursue you. I enjoy being the hunter. I enjoy, you know, the chase. Uh, Lawrence, leave me alone. <laughs> but yes, I, I'm not with that. But um, she can show some interest, but not. I would say I would agree. Like maybe show interest, but don't chase after me. Let me do the chasing. Let me chase after you. Let me let me lead. You can um again over there. <laughs> I know why she um it, but we're not going to get into that um and over there. But I do agree with um, <laughs> Elder Goldson. Anybody else want to respond to the question? Amen. <laughs> you got a question? I agree with the men because we're not supposed to be the ones pursuing. That's the first thing. And I agree with you all. Let them know that you have interest because we, on, on the one hand, we complain about men being men. But if you're pursuing them, you're not letting him be the man. So let the man play, do the man role. You can't be the woman and the man too. So let the man be the man and you be the woman. You do what you got to do. And if, you know, show interest. And if he's interested in you, he'll pursue you. You know, so you let him, I agree with you all. Let the man be the man. I understand. I'm a, I have a very strong personality. But I ain't ch I'm not chasing no man. I'm not doing it. The one that I'm with now, he chased me for a whole year of turning him down. And he would not stop. And then I finally let him take me out to dinner after a year. But he pursued me. He let me know that he wanted, he pursued me. I'm not going to chase after no man because I don't have to. And that's not my role. My role is to be a woman and let the man do the chasing. Thank you. Oh. Okay. Oh, 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 those online can hear. Why a year? There's <laughs> <laughs> nothing wrong with him, but in my position, and I can only talk about my situation, I had just got out of a 20 year relationship a few years back with my son's father my children's father, I was hurt. So just like the men have to make sure that they're at a certain spot, even though he still, I still had some stuff I had, you know, and I was blessed that God sent him because he helped me unpack my baggage. But that's not always the case. The reason I made him wait for years because I had to be cautious. I had children. You can say you're a good man, but in the world we live today, I can't bring any and everybody around my kids. So I had to know that I know that I know who you were and that you, if I bring you in the safety of my home, that it wasn't endangering my children. And that was the first, but it mainly wasn't because of him. It was because of me. It was because of me. I made him wait because I didn't want to, I didn't want him to come in right then because if he came in right then, he would have got the old Michelle and it wouldn't have been pretty. So I had to make him, I made him wait because I wanted to be able to be that one. You know what I mean? So it wasn't him. It wasn't him, it was me. And to protect my home and my children. Can so, I so the question was, so is it okay for, so that made it seem like it was okay for women to get themselves together, but men not, it's not okay for men to get themselves together? To say. So within that year, I'm not just talking about you, partner, you already know. But I'm just saying, if anyone should wait that long for a man just to be safe, if he move on, then you all are like, uh, well, he, he done moved on, uh, 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 he, he want me, or he's not pursuing. I'm not saying in her case, oh, no, I'm just saying, I'm saying in general, you like, because we, we, know, we know that w women, they play hard to get sometimes. They play, at what point do you say, okay, I'm going to show some sign of interest? I'm not saying pursue him. But I'm just saying, at what point do you show some sign of interest if he's pursuing you? Well, 
Well, let me let me let me interject right quick because in her and sis elders in elders case, she has been married before and she was hurt. Right. So I'm I'm talking. No, no, she was saying that she was hurt. Well, whatever it was, she was hurt, and she waited a year because she got kids involved. It was a lot of things that was involved, and it wasn't because she was just waiting just to wait. She was waiting because of timing. I've been hurt. I don't want to bring my in my inner feelings into this new relationship because it has the potential to damage it and it become nothing. So I need to heal. And so there's a difference between waiting and getting yourself ready or waiting and getting yourself mature than it is healing. So that I'm prepared so when I do come with you, when I do accept your offer, I'm whole. I'm not broken. I'm not battered. I'm not undecisive. I'm whole. So you want me whole or you want me broken? Because if you get me broken, your pursuit might change. You definitely have a, you definitely have a point and I'm definitely I'm definitely with you. But at my question is is that stated up front when you're getting ready to know somebody because as a man, if I'm pursuing you and I don't know that you've been broken, I just see that you've given me the long-handed spoon or whatever, I'm going to stay there for a moment. But then I'm going to move if you show no interest. So you can say it's because I need to heal or um, or you can say, uh, I don't know if I'm interested. I wouldn't know unless we have that conversation and we're up front about it. Well, yes, of course, there should be a conversation if that's the case. And if they want to, if they trust you enough to express that to you, because they may not trust you in that right. period to, tr to tell you that stuff, because men also can use that to their advantage. True. That's so it. I can't just come off That's and it. tell you That's everything it. that I've been hurt through and everything that I've been hurt from in the just the beginning of us getting to know each other. So everything is time that I can share some things with you that I may trust that you can understand. And if your pursuit remains the same tempo, then we can move from that point. But if your if your tempo slows down, and after I done told you that I've been raped or molested, then you know what I'm saying. Then you know. Then I got to check your motives now because hmm, now he didn't backed off, so you can't handle it. So when I when I first started dating Bishop, well before we started dating, he was pursuing me, and I told him, I said, uh, I just got out of a relationship, and I don't think this is a good idea. I'm not interested. But that didn't stop him from pursuing me, and his pursuit continued, and that's what that's I mean that's what really caught my eye. He never stopped. He never backed down. I mean, no matter how many times I didn't speak to him, no matter how many times I ignored him, he didn't back down. He kept coming. So if you really want it, is what I'm saying, if you really want it and you really believe that that's the one for you, then you won't let nothing stop you from getting it. Um, Sister Ia was saying, well, why, then why date? You don't have to be dating someone to get yourself together. Well, that's what dating is. That's, we get that mixed up. Dating is you can date how you can date as many people as you want to. That's dating. Courtship is meaning that I'm committed to one person and that one person is committed to me. So you date to get to know people. You date to figure out if you could be more, if you could be committed. That's what you're dating for. You date to get to know somebody. You date to see if you're on the same path or you're heading in the same direction. And for saved people, what we have to, we don't date like others. We have the Holy, if you have the Holy Ghost, you should use your discernment. And it shouldn't take you as long. Um, I believe at a certain age, like Deacon Cardell has said, at a certain age, you don't have to go a whole year to know if somebody is for you. And if you're not healed, if you're not ready, just say it. I'm not ready for that. Not broken. Don't date broken. Here's because what you what you mess around and do is you mess up somebody else's gift. Somebody something that would wasn't even meant for you. You 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 destroy it for the person that it was meant for. But you gotta know you. We can blame everybody else. We can blame the man, we can blame the woman, we can blame each other, but you gotta know you. And you gotta know what you're ready for. And you got, and then what you're ready for and what you're praying for and what you're asking for, you better be prepared for. Because a lot of times 
it has come to you and you were not prepared, if we be honest. Now, and then we do have the players. We do have the people that play games. We do have the people that want to string people along. That's, that's a part for the course. That's just a part of life. But you got to know. And you got to know what your value is. And when you value you, it's only so much you're going to tolerate. Then when you date broken, you end up settling for less than what God has promised you. Yes, absolutely. There was a question from the live. Um, it says, at what point do you differentiate waiting until you know it's right and just flat out playing games or stringing someone along? Discern. Discern. You got to discern. You got to discern who you're dealing with and what you're dealing with. Um, what I, I found myself doing is um, I, I weigh it out. You know, what this person brings to me, adds to me, you know, what I add to them. Would my life be any different if they're not there? And if my life don't be any different with them there, it's time for me to move on. I'm, you know, at a certain age, you don't waste time anyway. If, if a person come and I'm sorry, they got to be saved. I'm sorry. That's just my preference. Other people might want to date unequally. And I understand that you can be unequally yoked in the church. But if we're not even serving the same God, we... Let's not waste each other's time. That's where I'm at. You know, and, and, and here's a question for single people. Is singleness a curse or is it a choice? It's a choice. It's a choice. It's a choice and a blessing. It's all a choice. Everything is a choice. Amen. It's all a choice. Well, well it is. It's Every bit of it. It's, it's not no magic to it and God don't just slap it on you. It's a choice. Mm -hmm. If you begin salvation with that choice, which determines your eternal life, mm -hmm. why do you think everything has just gone come to you? Right. He gives you the chance to choose eternal life. Everything else is less than that. So it's a choice, period. It's all a choice. But we so make it no seem like it, it's a man. course. We make it seem like it's a curse. It's not. It's a choice. You do have a right to choose, Sister Jackie. just in general that they strive to become married. They want to be married. God honors marriage. So it's not a choice that you uh, that you, well, well maybe it is but for the it's most part, it's all most women do not want to be single. They want to be married. They want the joy of marriagehood. They want children. They want the family. They want the home. They want all that. So it's not a really a conscience choice that people want to be single. You ask the average single person, I'm 65. I've been married twice, and I don't want to be single the rest of my life. Right, not but, at all. Right, but I, it, I don't think that it's a choice. But every, it, every case oh, yeah. is different. Every case is different. There are single people who desire marriage, and then there are um, single people who desire to live a life of singleness. We make singleness, I find, in the church, inferior to marriage and you know when you re read your word you know that is not the case marriage is honorable it is honorable um adam is the prototype the model for what the church should be god ordains marriage and family but it is your choice to be married or single and in some cases some people do desire um marriage but we make singleness inferior to marriage and that's not what we should do we, I think a lot of people do that because they, they what should I say, they come here or they think this is the same okay, to, in terms of um, singleness and loneliness, which is two different things. Right. Because people assume because you're single, you're lonely. Right. And that's not true. Not true. Yes. And because they see you single for a long time, they assume yeah. that you're so lonely. So if, you, if they show up, yeah. they're going to grab you because I'm so desperately lonely. No, because I'm single don't mean I'm lonely. Yeah. yeah. And because, as, go ahead. I still say it's a choice because I choose, I could have been married several times, but when you're not what I'm, when we're not good for each other, we're not. So 
I'm gonna be married and still be alone? No. That don't make sense. So why I say it's a choice is for a while being a single parent, I chose to stay single because I had a daughter and I couldn't have 12 uncles coming through. Right. That's your uncle John, that's your uncle Jojo, that's your uncle James, that's, no, I, that's what I, so it's a choice. I could have been dating, but I didn't want that. I didn't want to have to explain that. Now, had the right one come along, then it would have it'll it'll be all right. I'm not saying I'm I'm choosing to be single forever, right. but for right. now right. I'm choosing to be single because I'm not gonna settle for anything less. So if I'm bringing like uh, Elder Joel said, if I'm bringing the whole meal, then what you bringing? We we gotta we gotta. There has to be a middle ground somewhere. I don't expect you to be perfect because I'm not perfect, but equal to at least. Uh, Sister Catherine? I was going to say that um, sometimes we go to seek God for our mate. And and when we seek God and leave it in God's hand and start doing the work that God called us to do, he said he will add to us. And I, and I believe I could have been married too about three or four times. But because <laughs> <laughs> I was engaged, I was engaged, uh, but it wasn't right for me. It wasn't, God let me know that person wasn't right for me. So I didn't want to let it go, but I had to let it go. Because like Sister um, Stephanie said, you don't want to be in a relationship and uh, you had not learned this person. Uh, you don't want to be in a relationship going to leave you home by yourself all the time. You, he could be there, but he, he's not there. You see what I'm saying? You could be in a relationship and you think it's going all good, but you're still feeling by yourself. That is not a relationship. That's just you got a person that's in there because you want that person there. But the Bible says you seek ye first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness. He said he will add on to it. Because I've seen in churches, I've seen a lot of people start dating this person. This person fell in love with this person, but this guy wanted somebody else. And what, how, you, how, how did he leave that person? He left that person hurt. And, and, and I saw this, this, this person so hurt, she backslide. So it, 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 it's good to find somebody that's gonna, gonna stick with you. They're not gonna be like you because you gotta remember, we all not brought up in the same home. When you found people and they not like you, you gotta realize they weren't raised with you. Give a point. Um, I got, and oh, I'm sorry, into um, like um, Minister JJ was saying, it's your choice to stay single. Because years ago, they uh, actually just about made people get married because either they were, uh, they, they claimed to be a he, she, or whatever. I'm serious, no, I'm being real. I'm being real. Good, brother. Either he, she, or homo. So, no, I'm being real. You know, and, and I'm not cussing either. But um, and the, and the people back years ago, they weren't in love with nobody, but they they paired them up and made them just about made them get married. You know, and they had all these babies, and and uh, the man couldn't take care. Of them. They have nowhere to live, Harley. They're on the welfare. So if you choose to stay single, if that's your choice. Stay single. Yes, ma'am. Here's a question. They said, once the trust in a relationship is broken, can it be mended? Once the trust in a relationship is broken, can it be mended? Yeah. I say yes. I mean... I think we, we are expecting too much perfection from each other. Right, right. I mean, come on now. I mean, I, I think it's unfair for you to be imperfect and expecting a perfect person. You see what I'm saying? I mean, come on now. We're both imperfect. But when we come together with our imperfections, we can make it work. And if the trust is broken, and I'm sure in many long-standing relationships, there are times when trust has been broken. Promises were being made, and they never come through. You see what I'm saying? 
and when the trust is broken, I'm sure maybe this person is talking in terms of um, cheating or, so, or stuff like that. But if you're committed to this person, then here we go again. We got to learn to forgive. Are we willing to do that? It's the same act of love again. It's not a feeling no more. Yeah. It's an act of love. It's a choice you're going to have to make. And you're going to have to be committed to this. Are we going to move on? Yes, we can. It can be fixed. I believe it can be fixed. Um, we're not perfect people. It's not a perfect world. So therefore, I, I feel the relationships can be mended. If we trust God like we say we do, and we consult God about our relationship, your relationship can be mended. There was a question about first dates. I'll go to it. The question was, on a first date, should men be expected to pay or should women come prepared? I tell you, can I answer that question, yes, please? I feel the first date, go Dutch. So it will be no, ah, I paid for your lunch, so now what, what are you going to give me? No, no, come on. Come on. Yeah. I'm being real here, okay? You want to be on this panel and I'm on it. That's right. You're good. That's right. You know, because I'm not saying out men in here, but just in general, they're always looking for something in return. So, ladies, I don't care what you do, who you date, who you go out with, have your money. So they can, so because they act funny, say, okay, you can't give me what I'm asking for, get your way back home. You have money, call a cab. Yeah, I'm yeah. serious. Because yeah. men, we as people, we are funny. We, we want to have our way with, with whoever we want to be with. If we can't respond to what you asking for, bye. I got my money in my shoe. <laughs> I'm going home. Could you repeat the question one more time? The question was, for first dates, should men pay or should women come prepared? Um, I believe in this day and time because, you know, we're dealing with a different type of people now. And a different mentality. In some in some cases, I would say now, you know, raised raised in the church, you know, our way is, you know, he pays, you know, she come, we we going after her. But we live in a day and time now where women, you know, they want to be treated as equal. Church got quiet, but they no. want they want to be treated. Um, but seriously, they want to be treated equal. Now, some of us of of a traditional mindset, you know, we're look you're looking at me like that's taboo. But and nowadays, when you're dating a female. It's totally different. A female, you know, may not want you to pay for her on her first date. Now, well, we've been raised in the church. That's foreign to us. I'm speaking French right now. But I'm talking in terms to people who are listening in the society in which we live. Women nowadays would find that offensive sometimes. But you know what, too? Because they find it offensive, because you all go half-stepping. Yeah, you, come on. I'm not saying you, brother. <laughs> I'm not saying you. But you go, men a lot of times go half-stepping. They go out with a young lady, and uh, they want them. They want to take them out. But what are you looking for afterwards? Come on, don't talk to Bishop. Turn, turn around here. I got here. a question. <laughs> I got a question. Who is y'all dating? Every man don't want nothing to pay for the meal. Yeah, that's right. But I feel like if they if they're asking you, pay. they want to treat you. If well, they're asking you out, out they want to yeah. treat you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I, I don't. Think you ask that, me out, you treat me. Yeah, if you asking me out. That means you want to treat me. Who is your I name? shouldn't be expected to pay if you're asking to take me on a date. Um, he's supposed to pay. He is. He's asking you to come and take me on a date. Not that you and him agreed to go on a date, but he came to ask you, could he take you out? So you're looking, if he's asking you, then he should pay for it. But always be prepared. Always be prepared if it doesn't uh, work out that way. You're prepared to pay for your food and you won't be locked up. Right, because cars right. decline, things happen. That's right. right. You know? But, yeah, I, but it's a difference in saying, can, uh, can I take you out or let's say, let's go to lunch. That's the difference. Then you know that I have to pay and you have to pay. But if you take me out on the date, son, you pay him. 
<laughs> no, I was just going to say, for me, I'm, I would be prepared to pay. Yeah, you, should. You, know, yeah, you should. Which I think. You um, but it. but I, I will be prepared to pay without wanting something in return. Well, that's you. Yeah, but I'm saying, you know, every man is <laughs> not the you. same. You know, like y'all, it's like y'all saying, oh, be prepared because if you pay, you know, they're going to want something. But not, not all men, you know, I'll pay. I'm just and I'm saying you. Here's a good question. Oh, they said, if you are dating someone who does not have a strong relationship with Christ as you do, is it your responsibility to get them where you are or let them seek Christ for themselves? I believe it's their responsibility because it's their relationship. I mean, <laughs> I mean, the question sounds like this person is evaluating um, where, the other, where the person who they're dating are in relationship with Christ. If you're in a relationship with Christ, you are in a relationship with Christ. I mean, I'm, one might be mature more than the other, but that's even better. We can mature together. If we're not unevenly yoked. So, so I mean, let me ask the question then. At what time does two people in a relationship are, are at the same level with Christ's relationship? Never. So that's what I'm saying. We're just expecting so much perfection. I mean, what level are you at so high that I just get, I just receive Christ as Lord and say, why are you so high that I can't date you? You're a man, I'm a woman. We both are in the body of Christ. I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. So what's so special about you than me? It's the same play field. You come 12 o'clock, the same day. You come 1 o'clock, the same day. The word says that. So why are we trying to make it look like I'm up here and you're down there? We, it's just, we make this thing too complicated. Too complicated. We are, we are all that. We are all that, like we think we are. We're full of faults. We have... I mean, bunch of scars. We all need time to heal. And, and together we can make this work. I mean, I don't know why we make this look like a mystery. It's not a mystery. It is not a mystery. And there's no... When, when I was supposed to get married with, to my wife, for sure, you all know her. We went to the pastor at Mount Olive. And he sat us down and he asked her, I mean, you just met this man. And he turned to me. What guarantees you have to you going to live a life with this man? What guarantee do I have to marry her? I, you know what I tell him? I said, in life, there is no guarantee. I mean, he popped his eyes out. Why? I said, in life, there is no guarantee. We're both committed, and we're going to work this one day at a time. One day at a time, we're going to, once we're committed, we're going to work it one day at a time. There is no guarantee. There is none. And so because of that, what are you going to do? Sit around and wonder and try to fix and try to fix. You can't fix it. You let God fix it. He gives you the wisdom to understand and to do what you ought to do, and you work with that. If he's the head of it, and he's, he's the head of both of you, then you're going to work it together one day at a time. Not, I'm not going to come fully made, and you're going to come fully made. Oh, you're going to know that. There's no way to figure it out. Nothing in life, nothing in life, in life is permanent. Nothing in, in life is guaranteed except God and his word and his promise. That's it. Everything he promised is a sure shot. There's nothing I can promise you that can be more sure than that. I mean, the thing is, I think we, we try to be faithful the way God is faithful. We cannot be faithful. Think about it. We cannot, I promise I'll see you at six. Something can happen, I just can't show up. You get me? It's not my, it's not my choice not to. Something happens. So I can make you promises and promises and promises and promises. We cannot be faithful. We can do our best, but with God's help, we can make it work. We cannot be faithful. God is faithful. So put him first and let's roll. Again, um, the word does say that iron sharpens iron. So you have to be able to help that person because you are a servant of God. And just because you are an apostle and um, just a Christian don't mean that y'all, God is not going to put you together, you know. And I had myself explained that to somebody, and they told me, it was like, I, I can't date you because you're a minister, and I'm just a Christian. 
And I say, and what? You got a relationship with God? I say, the only thing I need to know, if I need prayer and I can't pray for myself, can you pray? Can you get a prayer through for me? Can you be able to lift? You know, do you have a relationship? It's not about my, my relationship with God. Maybe a little stronger, but God loved both of us. He died for both of us. So for me to be so highly minded to say I'm better than you because you are just a Christian and I'm just a minister, you know, would be me exalting myself above you. And the word says that's wrong for us to do. So if you live in the word and you're discerning and, you know, praying about who this person is that's coming in your life and asking God before you even think about jumping into a relationship, because trust me, if you ask him with a sincere heart, he'll show that person to you. He'll show if you need to be with him or you don't need to be with him. Also, as it pertains to the church, I want to make this clear that when you're dealing with relationships, titles should be out. It's just a title. Titles are for church. They're for the inside of a building. When you are in relationship, my name is David. And that is Kim. When we're in relationship, when we're home, you know, and so when you're dating and, and we're dealing with relationship as it pertains to you know, who we want to date and who we want to be committed to. It doesn't matter whether you're an apostle, you're a bishop, you're a prophet. I don't want to date that person. I want to date you. So I think that we sometimes, that, that's another thing that draws up that wall um, between us uh, when it comes to even being committed is that those titles are thrown around. Put your title to the side if we're going to go down to, the, to eat to the table. Put your title to the side and let me yes, talk sir. to find out who you really are. Who you are behind that title. Because when I go home, I'm not, I'm not going to be going home with prophet. I'm going home with whoever you are. And that's who you, you know, and say, oh, that's not the prophet talking to me like that. No, this is the real me. You thought I was the prophet because yes, of who I was, which I am. You know, you are who you are when you're, you know, what I'm saying, in your relationship with God. But when you're talking about being in a relationship with an individual, you got, we come to the table with individual foundational things. Let's deal with who we are outside of our titles. Correct, Bishop, because I was, your character is not, is not lining up to your title. Some people's character is not lining up to who they are. Right, but some, some people are only seeking the title and not the individual. That's good. That's right. That's, that's right. That's right. That's right. That's good. That's right. So that's where they fail. That's when failure happens, when you seek the title and not the individual. Mm -hmm. You're seeking the prophet because they're anointed. You're seeking the bishop because of their, their status. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Status. And so you go out with this person, and they put it to the side. Okay, you don't like the individual. You only like the individual when they're in their role. Because they're in this, they're in the church, they're in the forefront. That's right. But now, when they are just out to eat, they're laughing, having fun. You don't like that person, so you got to be careful that you're not seeking the title, but you're seeking the individual. What you find out is that what you find out is the real them is flawed. That's right. And sometimes you can deal with the person with the title. Right. It's that other person that don't have the title that you can't deal with because they are totally different. Like night and day. And you be like, you know what? I can deal with you when you're in the spirit. But when you come out the spirit, I can't deal with you. I can't. You got problems. Some of them have some real, real problems. So don't, don't put your eyes on somebody because they are in the hierarchy of the church. Get to know the individual without the title. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. You'll be. Some it'll people are attracted to the anointing. They said it's attractive. It, it, it is, but who are you after the anointing lifts? Can I deal with you? 
Can we talk? Can we have a conversation? You know, a, 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 a real conversation, not with the these and the thus and the this is. Can we have a conversation? Can he, she, and we, can we talk? You know, who are you when, without the, the church? Who are you? With those titles become manipulation as well. Because whenever you get in, involved with someone, then you're anointed. And, and they are anointed men and women of God. And you're looking at them. and Because we're, you know, as... As Christians, we want to marry so, or we are, we want to be with somebody that is saved, mm -hmm. sanctified, and have the Holy Ghost. And a lot of times, we get we are attracted to their anointing, mm -hmm. especially us as women and men are on, on the same page. We're attracted to that anointing, and then, like you said, once we get them home or outside of the church, they they are they are they are real people. And we have to understand that what you see at church, or, out, or when they unroll, they're they they're they are real people. Mm -hmm. And we have to understand just because that they're that they're anointed, and you know, they're, they're because they're uh, uh, because they're anointed. When they leave the sanctuary, they are real people. And then, then you're looking at it like, well, you're not the same person that I was. What were you really attracted to in the begin with? Were you attracted to that person? Or was you attracted to that anointing? And we have to get be careful, especially as women. We get real gullible. We, you know, when we see these men, oh, oh yeah, we that's the one that we want. Mm -hmm. But then when they're outside of the church, and then we find out the real them, because I've seen men, I've seen men and women in church that I mean preach the house down. People are saved, sanctified, and delivered. And once they walk out the pulpit, you'll be like, then I came out the spirit, and I'm not. I'm just like, that's whoa. Right. That's right. But we have to realize that people are not perfect, and that's what I had to come to the conclusion with, even in marriage, that people are not perfect. And I would, well, I was one of those people that I'm saved. Or I'm, I'm the saved one in the house. Oh no, both of us are saved. But I had to come to the conclusion that just because I had a title, did not make me the more spiritual one. Do not, no, Pastor. And I had, to, I, and, and I'm serious about it. As I'm talking about me, because I'm, I'm, you know, putting it out there. I had to realize that, and because I was made, I was taught to. I'm just say that I was taught that because I was, I had a title, I was the superior woman in the house. And then I had to, when I found out that, okay, no, you're not the superior one, because you got a husband. You need to pipe it on down, come on down, and, and realize that you did. God gave you a covering. And he may not be where you are today, but all I had to do was show the Christ in me. I had, could not come, keep coming to him and say, you, you got to come up. You got to do this and you got to do this. All I had to do, all you have to do, is allow them to see the Christ in you. And if, when it goes back to the, that, those, those uh, people who are talking about their anointing, People, men and women of God, we have to be attracted to the person and not that anointing. You got to have the spirit of discernment in this season and know that what you're looking at may not be what you're going to get. <laughs> it may not be necessarily what you really want. That's right. That's right. I have a question, um, and it relates um, to what Pastor Simmons was saying. I've heard it said before that Save men desire to be single when they know they're anointed. They desire to be single because women are more prone to chase after them because of their anointing. My question is, as saved people, why do we have to fight through, through so many layers of who a person is when, the, is when who a person is and is the church not transparent enough to allow that person to be seen. So if, if you're a preacher and you know 
just like Pastor Simmons said, you have an anointing to flow and people are saved, sanctified, and you know women seek you. You stay available, but you entertain that woman to, to grab her attention. Um, and you make her fight through so many layers of who you are instead of just being who you are. Um, is the church not transparent enough in that aspect to allow women to discern more, if that makes sense? Sometimes it don't have anything to do with the church. I think it's the individual. We see what we want to see. Because sometimes what you're seeing is really what you're seeing. You're really seeing it. But as women, I think we make excuses for what we want. When it's something that we want, we look past everything else. The sign, says, the sign could be up and it could be in bold letters. Stop. Don't go here. And we'll still go because it's what we want. So um, I don't think it has, I mean, it could go either way. You do have some male and female that are anointed and they stay single because they like the attention that the anointing brings to them. So they'll talk to this one, they'll talk to that one, they'll talk to that one, they'll talk to that one, and then they'll make it seem like you're chasing them, but you're not. They, they opened the door. They pursued you first, but they will make it appear like you're pursuing them. So I think it's a case-by-case case thing. That's just my opinion. Anybody else want to weigh in yeah. on it? So I think anybody can act like they anointed, they can flip, they can flop, they can jerk, but you could, are they really anointed? You know, just because they get up and ah, that's not, it's not all, <laughs> come on, let's be real, because every, anybody, can, I can get up here and say, yeah, yeah, what, is that, Come on, y'all. You know, that's why we have to be careful when we come out. They are, they are highly anointed. Um, I am too. Somebody said that people have the tendency to choose to love potential. That is very true. Um, listen. Very, very true. <laughs> I, I'm well, that's dangerous. Uh, I'm sorry, go ahead. Go ahead, go ahead. Um, I'm not married to a wife. To a, I'm not married to a, a preacher. Okay. I'm, 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 I think it would be a weird thing to I go home with my wife, who is a preacher, and I say, Pastor, are you ready to come to bed? Or, I mean, come on now. What, what are we talking about? You're my wife. So I think that when we go home or we go out or it's me and you, I'm not talking to a pastor. I know I am talking to a pastor respectfully, but I mean, you are my wife or you're my husband. So like I said again, I think we get so destroyed because of lack of knowledge. We just put so much into it and so much mystery to this thing. Listen, it's a man and a woman. Needs need to be met. We love each other. And I mean, all the other titles and puff and fluff that we put to it, at the end of the day, you go home, you take off your wig, you take off your leg, you take off your eyebrow. I mean, come on. Let's be real. So, I mean, what are we talking about here? Why do we put so much mess to this thing? You get what I'm saying? I mean, we're home now, baby. You ain't got to preach. It's okay to take off your clothes. It's okay to take off your wig. I mean, it's, you know what I'm saying? You ain't got to be my pastor now we're at home. You ain't, you ain't got to be my... You get what I'm saying? So, <laughs> man, we just got to be real about this thing. It's <laughs> all the, uh, the rest is just fluff. It's just fluff. Let's, let's be real. Let, let, let me get to know you. You get to know me. And we treat each other with respect as a man and a woman, husband and wife. You get what I'm saying? We come to church. We're going to worship. We're going to worship. You see what I'm saying? We're still man and wife. If I see you a pass out or something wrong with you, I'm going to come grab you as a husband. I'm not going to come. You see what I'm saying? I'm going to minister. So we, we got to be real about it and, and, and deal with it. We got it. Like I say, we don't acknowledge we get destroyed. And it's right across the table, no matter how you look at it. Can I add something in a relationship and, you know, if you're going from relationship into marriage, it is your desire to know the person, not who we 
are when we come outside of our four walls. Flaws, insecurities, failures, and all. That is our desire. I want to know who you are. So that, and on the flip side to that, when we are in public, nobody can't tell me about you. Because I know you. I know if you got that lying tongue, I know you. You know what I'm saying? So I, I say that because that and and once you once you pursue a person over time, if you're in relationship or more so in marriage, within that marriage, things change. And and who they were at the beginning of your marriage, they're no longer not to say in a bad way, but like they are a different person. Uh, my wife. Uh, when we first got together, she loved movies. And I'm like, oh, gosh, that's boring. Now, it's the total opposite. You know what I'm saying? So you marry um, f for who they are to become, if that makes sense. So but saying all of that is I want to know the real you. You know what I'm saying? Uh, that That is probably the biggest thing because I think we we marry or get in a relationship for a lot of fluff. You know what I'm saying? And then... Because we're not true to ourselves, we have a hard time removing those layers to who we're trying to be in relationship with. I have a question. I think that's still like marrying for potential, though. Like, if I can't accept you for who you are today, then the what if it never comes? You know what I'm saying? Like, I have to accept who you are today in order to, the longevity of that, because that person may never be who you desire them to be, but I have to accept who they are. I think that's what he was saying. Like, you accept them for who they are, but you never know who they're going to be five years from now. So you have to always be willing to allow them to grow into whoever they might be. You know, you love them for them, and as they continue on and on, regardless of who they're going to be, you're there, you love them for them. But you love but them. You have you an expectation. <laughs> that's yeah, that's an okay, expectation. Okay. So yeah, okay. that's a different thing. Okay. Okay. And can I say something? And two, and two a lot of times, times we have to keep, have to keep people, people out of our affair. We sh we share too much with our friends, friends with um, with uh, couples. couples. You know, they we share too much, and we get um, our friends' advice about my wife this and my wife that, or my husband this. Don't do that. Whatever you're going through, you go through between the two of you and God. You don't have to tell nobody how, how lovely she is in your bedroom. Don't do that. I'm, come on. Hey, don't do that. You know, keep your bedroom affairs in your bedroom. You understand? And just, just be real to each other and God. You don't have to. He's your best friend. And if something happened with Megan, oh, you know, Megan, Megan, Megan. Don't do that. That's between you and Megan and God. Don't share your home affairs. Whatever goes on in your home, let it stay there between you and your, your spouse. That's what I was going to ask to piggyback off what Mother said. Do you think because of the social media era that we're in now, we share too much? We date publicly before we even know what and if we're going to last. Do you think... We share too much. Yes, <laughs> definitely. I, I think that social media has its place. But and some people get upset because you don't want to take a picture with me and put it out on Facebook. You don't want to show that we're together. It's not that you got anything to hide. It's just nobody's business. It's not that you're doing anything wrong. wrong. It's just nobody's business. And part of the reason why a lot of relationships, and I appreciate all the married couples and everything they're saying because I'm soaking it all in. Because my prayer has always been, God, make me a wife so that I can be a wife. So when he, find, you know, when he finds me, I'm, he, he's finding a wife. You know what I'm saying? So I'm, I appreciate everything they're saying. But being single, I see it all the time. We're always on social media. And, oh, my boo. And, oh, my. And, and you get upset. And it causes friction in the relationship. Why do you have to publicly display everything? And then when you break up, all your friends and everybody are bashing each other. And it just causes problems. So a lot of times your relationship is breaking up because you got too many people involved. I'm with you. I'm not with all your friends and all your, I'm not with you. I'm not with you. you know what I'm, I'm not with all them people. So keep your private stuff private. 
it's all right every now and again if you want to, you know, y'all want to post a picture, but it ain't got to be your whole love story online. That's nobody's business. Me and my friend, me and my, the guy that I date, we're not even Facebook friends. I don't want to be his Facebook friend, and he, I don't want him to be mine. Not that I have anything to hide, but it's just no reason. I trust him, he trusts me. I don't have to be your Facebook friends. I agree to a certain extent. Put my picture on your page so I can have somebody tell me what you really about. Amen. Because we got some little, we got some sneakers, you know, little sneakers out there that be hiding. You got five girlfriends, you know, and you don't, I don't think it ain't nobody business. We ain't got, it's us, this us. We love each other. We together. And you got four other girlfriends. Put my picture up together. See, cheese. Mm. <laughs> so if somebody else is out there, they are going to, it's going to be revealed. Yeah, gonna be Amen. Revealed. You don't have to put your business out there. I'm not saying that other girl. I'm not, you know, I, I'm going against you. But we ain't got to put all our business out there. But every now and again, on a birthday or a holiday, we need to take a selfie and post that baby because I need to make sure that I'm the only one. Okay? Somebody say at least post you me two times a year. At least, at least post something about me because I need, I'm talking about when we're dating now. I'm talking about we just getting to know each other. We just, you know, hey, I'm strong enough to know that you're in a relationship with me and I'm in one with you. We need to post the selfie. You know, whether you and, and, and you know go in depth or whatever or who the person is, we need to cheese together and post that picture. Amen. Because that's going to reveal all the wolves in the pack. Facebook, because, you know, yes, whatever you do break up, everybody done read in between the lines because now you're not posting anything about your boo anymore. So you don't even have to say we not together. We already don't read in between the lines. We already know y'all not together no more. But you know what? It is so true. You know, sometimes you do have to let people know that, yeah, I do have a significant other. Because I had a man, I'm a married woman. I've been married for 31 years this this month. I had a, a man approach me in church and ask me, was I married? And that's okay. And, and, and it's because, and I I'm not, a, I'm not one person, I'm not a person that, post pictures a lot. Not of me and my husband. I don't. I just I just don't. Every now and then on an anniversary, maybe on a birthday or something, I will post a picture of us. But I had a I had a uh, I had a young man approach me in church and wanted to know was I married. I don't never see you or if I been I've been yeah. Are you are you married? Yes, I'm a married woman. And so every time that I'm now, I'm trying to be a little bit more conscious about it and post them on my. <laughs> but that should be flattering, but you can still stop them at the door. Yeah, you can you stop them that, at the door. I have a question. With that said, with posting and, you know, wanting to be a part of the social media, do you feel that relationships and marriages are subject to social pressure now. Um, I had a conversation with a friend. I'm not going to name any names. But I have a conversation with a friend um, about their pursuit to, uh, with someone else that they may feel that um, they're under social pressure because of how other people might perceive who they're trying to pursue. So if they feel like, well, she's too fat, or, you know, she's not, you know, butt's not big enough, or, you know, that type of stuff, they might not be willing to pursue because of, not necessarily how they feel, but because of the power of influence. So do we feel like relationships and marriages are subjective to what we see on social media? Do you feel like your woman crush Wednesday has to be put up on Wednesdays because you want to, or you, you want to be in line with what social media is doing? I just believe that's superficial. I, I believe it's shallow as well. Because at the end of the day, talking, you know, at least listening to other married people, that stuff changed. That, that, the the, the uh, hype of, um, you know, what do you call it? WCW or whatever? 
I guess yeah. so. And all, all of that stuff changed. That's superficial. At the end of the day, if it relates to marriage, can we, do we have the same mindset to live together? Are we both committed to this? Do we see ourselves in the future being better, growing in the empire? Whatever the case may be, that is the focus, not about. Now, yes, you, all of that other stuff matters, but it should not have that much weight, I should I say. Anybody else? Pastor King, you got something to say? Go ahead. Go ahead. Say Give it. him the mic. You should have been on the panel. Hmm? Anything. You know. I'll say this. Um, the individual have to be secure themselves. I think a lot of that happens when the person is insecure. Um, and so if I like fat guys... I like fat guys. It don't matter what my friends think or what my friends say about it. If that's what I like and that's what I desire, that's what I'm going to have. And so we fall into that trap when we are insecure and we need validation from people. I don't need validation from people. I like what I like. People laugh at me all the time because my food has to be separated. Well, either we can eat together or you can sit at another table. That's just who I am. You know what I'm saying? So you can't, you can't be like embarrassed about who you like, what you desire, you know, what you like. You can't be embarrassed about that unless you have insecurity yourself. Then you need to check yourself, build yourself up some strength, read your word, you know, become who you know you need to become, and then <laughs> go forward. And add on to what Chris was saying, you, and even if you married that person, your friends are not going home with you and her. Okay? It's just you and if she's big as this church. If you love her, hey, come on. No, I'm just saying, if she's that, <laughs> if she's that large and you love her, you know, don't ask your friend, you think, you think Sally is cute? You think she's, you think, oh, oh I, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. No, no, I'm sorry. Telling you she fine. My mother. Amen. <laughs> or, you know, or does she, is she, is she, is she, is she thin, skinny? How she look? Is she brown skin? Or is she red? Come on. So, yeah, but I wouldn't marry her because she looked like that. No, you love her, you marry her. If you look like this bottle sitting on his, on his table, you marry her. Come on. Let's be real. JG, you're looking at me, but I'm telling, talking to you. <laughs> oh, um, the question I was going to ask along those lines is, do you think when two people get married, they're bringing two families together. I know it's one big family, or do you think they're creating a third family? The question was, when you think, do you think when two people get married, do you think they're bringing together the, uh, the groom's family along with the wife's family together, or do you think they're establishing their own family? No, they establish their own family. Everybody yeah, agrees with that? Right, you establish your own family. That's why I said you can't uh, ask your parents. Once you get married, you can't ask your mom, you know, how Johnny is doing. No, keep that to yourself. Okay. You're, uh, you're, that's you, just you and him. Or you and her. No. Keep the families out. That's why a lot of people ain't married today. Because of their mom and their daddy. I definitely agree with what you said. You are making your own family. There you have your husband's side of the family, you have your wife's side of the family, but the family that you create with your husband and your wife, that's your family. Because you're creating your own dynamics in your own home. So you may not may not want to continue to do what your parents did. And you, especially when you're talking about breaking generational curses. If you have generational curses you want to break, you're going to set the tone of your home and for your family, and what you want to have for your legacy. So you're making your own family. I agree. Unless, I, I, I but just you know, asked. I'm sorry. Unless one of the spouse have um, a child or two, then when you marry that lady, vice versa, then you take those children with you. They're yours too. You can say, well, they're not my children because she had them before I was married to her, or vice versa. You marry her, you marry the children. Okay, move on. 
All right, I have a question. Why do men in a committed relationship fight a woman's desire to remain abstinent until marriage? Are they are there any men willing to wait? All women. Amen. I got to jump on that one. All women, because I know some women's that is um I mean pop pop step crackling pop. So we're gonna have to make that quick. I know whoever asked that, we're gonna have to we got to add both genders in that question. All right, so both genders. Why do okay, well let me ask it like this. For the men, do you feel like when you're dating a woman that is in the church, do you feel like she pressure you when you're trying to stay absent? Well, the question is, when you're in a committed relationship and you're trying to stay abstinent, you don't want to have sex, um, why do men or women push you to have sex? Are there any individuals that are willing to wait until they're married to have sex? Do you feel like there's any individuals left that want to wait until they're married to have sex. Um, my question is, if we are in a committed relationship, why are we not married? How committed is this? How can we be committed and we're not married? So, I mean, how long is this commitment of abstinence? So, I mean, I don't understand that. That don't make no sense to me. If it's a committed, re if it's, it's not a, it's not, if it's a committed relationship, why is it not a marriage? Because that's what a marriage is. So why are we playing games and waiting and wait? What, are we going to get more committed at some point or something? I, I don't get it. Yeah. If you're committed already, what, what are we doing here? We, we dating mice with cheese? I mean, might as well go on and get married. That's, that's you making it a problem. That's right. Exactly. Because you're bound it to problem. fall into sin. Yeah. Period. Cries loud. Okay, Sister Catherine, response to that is, she said, when you're dating and you're saved or in the church, your flesh is going to cry, meaning it's, it's going to desire that. So her remedy to that is when you go out, go out in groups. Um, don't go out alone. So you have an accountability partner. Some people, some people is down for that. Some people are not. I think... I think you just got to know your limits. Right. Uh, there was a question that asked, they asked, um, is kissing, is that too much? If, yes. If kissing is too much, how much is too much kissing? What kind of kissing? Yeah. Yeah, okay. So what kind of kissing? Listen, what kind listen, of kissing listen, are we listen. talking about? I can answer that. If you drop a seed. Play it with fire. Let me drop, let me answer that for you <laughs> easily. If you drop a seed. In the ground, it doesn't matter what mother, what kind of water waters it for it to grow. Whether it's pipe water, rain water, after bath water, wash water, car water, as long as it get water, it will. It's a seed. The only thing it knows to do is grow. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And and, and you had kissing. It, it don't kiss. Listen. It it still goes back to you knowing you. Much. You know you. You know how many rub downs you can take. You know That's how many right. kisses you can take. You know all of that. You know. You don't know. You that. know in your mind when you went on the date if it was gonna go another place right. other than just dinner and a movie. 
you know it's most of the time it's premeditated. You already know if he do this, I'm gonna do this. If she do that, I'm gonna do this. Come on. We're adults. They said, Well, what are you right, supposed to do? And it don't do? take much. They said, Well, what are well, what are we supposed to do? What do you mean what are we supposed to do? Keep your hands to yourself. Keep your hands if you can't out. handle it, keep your hands to yourself. Keep your hands in your pocket. That's all. Yeah, keep your hands. Mr. Yeah. Prince. They're, they're, yeah. not, they're not saying that you cannot kiss. Let's clarify that. this because it's about to, about to take a turn on social media. That's not what they're saying. What they're saying is you need to be careful and know your boundaries and set them. Yeah. And each other need to respect those boundaries right. that you set. So if you know that you like to kiss and you know your hand's going to travel when you do that, yeah. and if you don't want it to go to that place then you have to set boundaries, and maybe you should kiss as long as you kiss him. <laughs> so you got to set boundaries. If you're going to entertain those areas, set boundaries. And if you know you're not going to respect those boundaries, then you don't need to dibble and dabble in it. Because when you dibble and dabble in it, you, if you're not careful, you're going you're gonna to end yeah, up yeah, being somewhere right. you say you don't want to be. Now, you say you don't want to be there, but when you end up, it's going to be a oops too late. So my thing is, you know, you got to know who you are and you have to set boundaries. And if you can't handle the boundaries that you set for yourself, then my advice to you is to pump I your think brakes. That, I think that should be communicated too. Before you go on a date, you let this person know, this is my area, don't. You know, you don't go on a date and let them make that assumption by doing what you like and now you're in the hot seat and you don't know how to get out of it. That's true. But on the flip side of that, you have to be careful even when you do that because that then strikes a person to tempt you. So sometimes you can't tell them your secrets. You can't tell them your secrets because when you end up telling them your secrets, they're going to do whatever they can to tempt you to get you to, oh, she said don't kiss on the ear. I kiss on the ear. She let me do it. She said don't do it, but I'm going to do it anyway. So they do it anyway, and then you let them go a little further. Then you let them go a little further. And before you know it, you're saying, oh, it's too late then. That's why, that's why sometimes you can't. That's, a, that's why you have, that's why you say, you need to set personal boundaries. Yes. Now, y'all can have the discussion about whether or not we're going to be abstinent or whatever the case is. We can have that broad discussion because, you know, abstinence is what it is. You know, but as far as my personal boundaries, you have to set them. And I can't just tell you. We ain't going past here because they're going to try you. Oh, yeah, and, and the devil is slick. Yeah. yeah. So, so is that with just with dating or that's in a, a committed relationship? Because I, I feel that in a committed relationship, as far as, you know, like courtship, there should be con conversations about sex. Like oh, absolutely. what I mean, you like and what you don't like and what you, you know, that, should, have, that should be a conversation because I'm not getting ready to be surprised. Like, Super surprised when I, I get married. Like. But then again, like past us, uh, first lady said, you gotta know your boundaries. You gonna have to know when to fold them and when to let them go. No, I no, understand I'm not, that. I'm yeah, not saying don't have it. What those con okay, yeah. not having those conversations when you're dating. Like when you're dating, but is it? Do you have them in a committed relationship? You or should you have, have them in, a, in a, a committed relationship that's going to that place. I'm not. I'm not having no. I'm not having all of those discussions with somebody that we've just been dating a long time, but you ain't got no commitment. You, won't, you ain't proposed to me. We ain't talked about none of that. Because even in marriage counseling, you talk about the bed. You know, because you can't expect, you, if you've had multiple partners, you can't expect who you're about to marry to be those partners. They're going to be who they are. And you're going to have to be willing to accept that if you haven't already tested the waters, you're going to have to be willing to accept what they have to bring to the table. Amen. So... With that being said, I'm not saying you don't have those. I'm just saying you got to know when to have those conversations. If you're not in a committed relationship, then I don't suggest you have those conversations in depth. I can say, hey, this is not what I want to do, whatever, whatever. Either they're going to respect it. If they don't respect it, then you know what you need to do. Because if you can't respect my body enough to honor me when I say that that's not what I want to do, then we don't need to be together. And that's just the bottom line. Respect me. All right. This question is, if you have two busy people, um, one travels a lot, one works all the time, um, and there's even a little bit of distance, um, how important should 
the intensity for communication be? How important should that be? If you have two busy people, one travel a lot, one work a lot, um, and then there's a little bit of distance in between them, how intense should the persons be about communicating? Single people. Looking, I guess, to go towards that direction in marriage. How intense should the communication be? How important is it? You're single. Mm -hmm. How intense should it be? Oh, they talking about having phone sex. No, no. Well, I don't know. Well, I didn't catch well, that. Though. I mean, you she said it's intense. Not. So, I mean, we're talking intense. Now, well, y'all say real talk, right? Exactly. Okay, it's real exactly. talk, right? Okay, let's talk about what the let's young talk. people are doing. Because it's all this is com um, conversation when you're... Right. Let's talk about what young people are doing today. So, I mean, right. I know they probably didn't state that in the question, but it is what... In, if you, if I'm, I can have my, my thought of intense conversation is intense. I mean, what kind of conversation we have that ain't intense to talk about that? Because I can tell you what I like and what I don't like. That's not intense. Okay. You talking about how frequent, how frequent they talk? They're in a long distance relationship. I, I, I think maybe they're talking about how frequent to how frequent do they talk? Like how often should you talk? That's not what she said. I know, I know, but I, I think maybe that's what they were talking about. Read the, read well, that's the what I got from it. The read the question. Oh, the intensity. Now, since we went over there, intensity. How? I mean, how much should you talk about? I mean, what kind of conversation should you entertain? Should you entertain it to the sexual part, or should you keep it PG thirteen? Because if we be honest, we do we do go there. Because the first. That's the first thing they say. Hi, honey. What you got on? Hey, come on. Hi, sweetie. What you wearing tonight? Oh. Oh. Are you, okay? uh, you got you, you got on. You have that sheer nightgown on. Sheer. Yeah. Yeah. Come on. Well. Oh. Well. Well. Uh. I I wish I could really see. Well, sweetie, well, sweetie, what you have on tonight? You got them boxes I bought you? Yes, she is. You got the boxes? Oh, man. We're so far away. But I wish I could be there. Yeah, me too, honey. I wish I could be there too with you. Boy, I, I dream about you every night. Give us a scenario. I'm dreaming. Oh, yeah, I have. Here we go. Here we go. You better play these kids. Where, where's those kids? I have wet dreams. <laughs> That's what they say now. Come on. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So they need to hear this right here. They're grown so and, I'm, now, and their parent um, is right here. I'll be there soon. I say that to y'all because I had a long distance relationship. Right. 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 That's right. Tell it like it. T.I. Help us, mother. Help them. Mother done drop the mic. I had one. You know? And it, it actually is no good. And, I, and uh, I'm not married today. Because the long, long, long distance relationship is no good. I live in New York and the Jody live down here. Okay, it's no good. Tell you right now. Yeah, I think long distance relationship will cause you to tap into other areas yeah. that you may not be um, ready to fulfill when you see each other. Mm -hmm. So you have to, you know, you have to be careful with even the long distance relationship conversation, yeah. um, because when you do come together to meet or you to see each other, that's in my mind. Mm -hmm. 
what you what we were talking about on the phone that's in my mind so my expectations may be different from yours based on our conversation that we had on the phone yes so now when we come together you know i'm hey you know what we're working with <laughs> you know so you got to be careful with conversation yeah. and expectation because they at one point or another they're gonna have to meet This is good. This is real good. Um, but we're going to bring it to an end. What we're going to do now is we're just going to go. Um, um, and we are planning to have future conversations. Um, I got, well, can I ask one, one last question? Sure. Um, that somebody wanted to know, and I feel like it's necessary. Um, do you feel, and this is any um, single, well not single, dating, married, do you feel that appearance alters your service? Meaning the way your spouse or the person you date looks, does it change what you're willing to do for them or how you're willing to treat them by their appearance? Right. It, it shouldn't, but it does. But why would you make it? I mean, is that like what you got going on? You know, some people already know I'm not going to use you. Why would you at least make it kind of like So let, I guess even further, let's say you gain more weight. You know, you're married, you gain more weight. Is, is this after marriage or, or before marriage? Does or that dating change? Or what? Does that change the service of how you treat? your spouse because they're not what you marry or not what you thought they were going to be. It can be. And that's why it's something that you should discuss. I mean, well, I mean, discuss it, when you're going to gain weight. No, I think I'm trying to, I'm trying to read in between the lines here. Lines. So, okay. So I'm <laughs> once skinny. Now I'm big. Okay. Then, you know, I, I can't move like I used to because I got added weight. I'm trying to keep it here now. Keep it. I can't move like I used to because I got added weight. Um, things change when you gain weight, you know. Your, your pressure change, your, all that. So all that take effect on things that we do and as far as marriage is concerned. So, you know, that's why you have to, you love for better or worse. Because I may be better in the beginning and then I gain weight may, may become worse to you. You still got to love that and accept it. You know, I might not can give you what I gave you when I was smaller, but you're getting something. So we're going to have to work with each other. Still got, you got the, the service. Work, you still got to work that thing out. You still got the service. You might not be able to do it the way you intended to do it, but you got to find a way to have it done. Hallelujah. That's real. You got that's to find a way to make it work. Find a way to make it work. Just change positions. That's all. That's right, <laughs> mother. That's right. Her mic off. Her mic call. Oh, okay. Um, it's true. You know? It, hey, yeah, change position, you know? So Listen. even with, you said change position, while we're here, even with how often, I might not want to be with you Listen. that often because the frequency, because you're big, or, you know, you're not big enough, or whatever your preference is. So Listen. whatever you can do, married couples, whatever you can do, to satisfy each other, you do it. Yeah, yeah. You do it. Oh, yes, yes. Say whatever. No, no, no. Yes, whatever. <laughs> whatever. 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 Listen, listen, the bedroom is undefiled. So, what goes on in your bedroom? <laughs> what goes on in your bedroom? That's all. Yeah. yeah. You 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 stay in your bedroom. Whatever you do, you do. To satisfy one another. Hey. You see, that's why. That, that's where the big difference comes in when we say we love. Yeah. What do you mean you say you love? You see what I'm saying? That's why we, I say the word love is a decision and it's the act of the will. See what I'm saying? Because yes, you love this person. What does that mean? You love me because I look young and I'm so slim and this right and that's right. But what happened to after we married and we have the kids? And the injustice and selfishness to that is 
they're your kids or they're my kids. You see what I'm saying? And it's not like I don't start having a big gut and my hair start recite too. Or receding here line. So it's very selfish for say the, the husband to look at the wife and say, I don't love you no more because you look like this and look like that. It's time to cause her to change. And yes, she have our kids. But if I be honest with myself, I don't look the same when we get married either. You see what I'm saying? I got to bend over to see my toes now. It's tough to, I ain't got much left to comb. I got to shave it off clean. You get what I'm saying? So it's, it's, and that's why love is not about feelings. You get me? On, it is never, ever about feelings. Talk feelings have nothing to do without it. It has nothing to do without it. Not, I'm sorry, nothing to do with it. It's all about the knowledge that you gain from knowing each other and the commitment that you have between each other to love her or love him for better or for worse. No matter what, baby, it's me and you at the end of the day. You see what I'm saying? I don't look all that hot no more, but you're still my boo. The extra belly fat you have, they're my kids. Look how beautiful they are. You see what I'm saying? I'm still over here having problems because I eat too much. I get fat in the belly and all this kind of stuff. So it's, it's like I say, all these are little fluff that we look at and find reasons to not like and say we don't love. We didn't love in the first place. I think that, if you that's love, how I see it. I'm sorry. I think if you love somebody, you need to be the solution. Like if you want her slim, if you want her slim, let's. Let's work out together. If you want her hair long, let's let's, you know, let's get you a sew in. You know what I'm saying? Like it's it's work. Yeah, but the the, the, the the danger to that is consider the amount of pressure you're gonna put your mate under that they're gonna have to at all times try to change, try to change to fit what you think they should look like. It's pressure is healthy. It's pressure sometimes. that causes sicknesses. I understand that, but healthy pressure is always good. I but think but healthy pressure while, is always good. Yeah, but you hang this expectation over this person's head that no matter what, they're going to have to always keep that look. It's not possible. You're asking too much. I'm just saying. The reality is asking too much. And I feel like it's more projected much. on women than it is, my opinion, on, <laughs> on me. There will be change. You are. You, ain't no way you're going to look fresh 25, look the same fresh 50, 65. No, but at the no. same time, you're still my wife. Oh yeah, I get it. Yeah, I understand, but that's that's very, that's that's a lot of pressure to ask a person to always look like what you want them to look like. I gotta be mean. Yeah. I mean, healthy pressure. Healthy pressure is like saying, you know what, baby? I find that these days you don't have, you don't have to tell her, but you can say, baby, you know, I find out that these days I can't breathe so well. I, I think we need to start walking. You can accompany me walking, so you getting benefit and she getting benefit. Because no matter, like I said, no matter what you say, you have problems too. You're getting older too, and they're not. There are things you can do too. You see what I'm saying? So that's that's a healthy way of looking at it. Or say, you know what, maybe let's start eat, not eat so late, or eat so much of this because we're both getting older. Instead of start pointing on that, say, I need you need to quit the ice cream, or you need to stop doing that. What about you? Yeah, you ain't look all that hot either. That's right. Don't tell me not to eat no ice cream. I know that's right. You see what I'm saying? So, so find stuff that you both can do together so you're both benefiting. And by you doing that, it's helping you and it's turning around things for her too. And after a while, she start like how she start look, it motivate her to start doing more and motivate you to start doing so you're both. So just eat a lot of fish like shrimp with no garlic. <laughs> Jay, no garlic. Mute her mic. <laughs> Do we have any questions in the audience? Do anybody out in the in the audience have anything that they want to ask before we close? Shekinah? So uh, let's say you're in like a young relationship and uh, this person is talking about marrying you in the future. Does that count as potential that they see in you or things like that? Absolutely. Absolutely. That is. That's good. Anybody else? I say to I say to the young ones, don't get twisted. Keep your guards up. 
I'm serious. Keep your guard up. I don't care how much they say they want to marry you. Keep your guard up, baby. Okay. You say, well, okay. We talk about that. We talk to my parents. But right now, I'm not ready. I need my education. I need my education. Now I think about no marriage, no coding, no dating, and no touching, touching. Okay. No, ain't, ain't no dating. No. No, 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 no. Because you know, cause today, people, dating, dating is not good right now at this time. So all I can say to you ladies, young people that want to date, keep your guard up. Keep your guard up high. Put a wall there. Put a wall. Don't even hold hands. No. No. Don't it, no. You know why? Let me say something. And I'm, I'm serious because years ago, people used to hold, boys used to hold a girl's hand and they used to tickle the middle, the middle of their hand. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on, yeah. come on. You right, Oh, mother. yeah. And, and that's a sign. That's a sign. That's a sign right there. That's it. They want to lay with Show you. Show them again. Show them again what they do. They, they hold your hand. They hold your hand do what? Show them. Uh-huh. Yeah, boy. Flesh. Say, ugh. <laughs> come on. I know what I'm talking about, okay? It, you know, and I'm not being some hard. of y'all in here then did that. I'm not being hard for the for the for the, for the young people. I'm not hard. I'm not being hard for the young She's talking people, good, baby. Mother. Okay, but you have to be so careful today. So 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 careful where you go. Like they were saying before, don't go alone. Go with a part a group. And again, I say, be careful when you're out. God, I love Careful, young people, older people. When you're going out, you put your drink down. Don't go back and drink it. Please, because they have a thing called date rape. Date rape. So you have to be careful. Don't be so he, 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 he with your girlfriends either. Because a lot of times, they... Think, think, everything is a joke. They say, oh, uh, Chanel, let's see what happens if Chanel drank this when she comes back. And you drank it, not knowing. And they're your friends. They're your, your ace boom coom. Your pride and joys. Don't do it. You might be left. I'm, I'm talking when I know, okay? Hmm. Whew. I'm, oh, I'm talking what I know. Just be careful. Please be extra careful. You know, if you don't think it's right, call home. Keep money on you. Keep money if it ain't in your sock. I talked to one young lady uh, a few months ago. I said, if you go out, always have money with you. Don't depend on someone else, your friends, uh, tell, telling you, getting mad at you, say, well, you can home the best way you can. I said, okay, I got my own. Or call your parents. But just be careful. Yes, I didn't mean to go that far, but be careful. Yes, Please be careful. I beg you to be careful. We thank God for the conversation on relationships and marriage. And uh, we thank God for our panel, um, the interaction of the audience. It's been great. It's been great. Um, and I'm sure there's more questions and more areas um, that we can go into, but tonight we're going to close with what Mother said. Be careful. Young people, older people, we're living in different times. Be careful when you're dating. Be careful when you're even online dating. People are crazy. Know who you're dealing with. Know them background checks. Do what you got to do to protect yourself. It's worth it. It's worth it in the end. Because I've known people that did that online dating and they're not here anymore because they hooked up with the wrong person. They seemed sweet at first 
and they end up dead because you trust what they put on the profile. We can put anything on our profiles. We're only going to put what we want people to see anyway. So be careful. Pray for discernment. Ask God to sharpen your spirit of discernment when you're dealing with people so you'll know who you're connecting yourself to. Um, we uh, thank God for Brother um, Elder Edwin Gosen, Minister Monterey's Walker, Deacon. Thank God for Deke tonight. We thank God for First Lady, Mother Hemingway, Lady Megan. We thank y'all for contributing to the conversation. We thank you for your wise counsel. Um, we don't have all the answers. And what might work for us might not work for you. But you got to know what you're going to tolerate and what you're going to put up with. You should have relationship goals. Read, there's books out there. There's so many things that can help you. You got people that will help you. If you got good leadership, talk to your leaders. Talk to people that's trying to go where, talk to people that's been where you're trying to go. Amen. So we're going to close um, this session. We do have um, light refreshments um, in the back. So um, please help yourself. We thank everybody on Facebook Live for all your questions, um, all your participation. Um, and look for us because we're, we're going to be on here again. We're going to be on here again. Different topic, um, but things that need to be discussed that we don't always discuss because we're in the church. We feel like it's taboo, like things don't go wrong in, in the church. It does. We have the same uh, battles and things that you go through. Amen. So um, that's all I have. Sister Chanel, you have anything you want to add? I don't have much. I just want to, again, say thank you to all of the panelists. When I asked you, you were very consenting. You were very open uh, to coming in and having a conversation. Um, so I'll just say thank you for taking time out to come out and um, supporting us. And I want to also add, thank God for my bishop being with us tonight. Again, we thank God for our first lady. I thank God for my co-chair because she pushes me. Thank God for Pastor Lawrence, Pastor um, King and Pastor Simmons being with us. I thank God for you, 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 everybody that thought it not Robert to come out in this cold, cold weather, rainy weather. We know when it rains, we want to be at home. Thank you, thank you, thank you for coming and supporting. Thank you for getting on the live. Thank you. We appreciate it. And whatever you have, or whatever you're promoting and you're doing, please let us know, and we'll we'll support as well. Amen. So I'm going to close with prayer. We'll just stand and we're just going to. Father, we thank you for everything that has been said. We thank you that for everything that has been done. God, help us to rightly divide this word, oh God, in the name of Jesus and apply it to our life, oh God, to make us better in the name of Jesus. God, we can't do nothing apart from you, oh God. So, Father, we ask, oh God, where we leave this place but never leave your presence, be with us in Jesus' name. And we ask, God, that you bless the food that's about to be, re that's about to be served for a nourishment of our body. Bless the hands that prepare it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.